In one of the previous steps, we discussed about constructor injection. What we are doing in here is we provided a constructor for the sort algorithm. So the other way you could have done this is by using something called setter injection. So I'm removing the constructor and I'm actually generating a setter. So all shift S or command option S or right click source generate get as and setters. I just want to generate the setter. So I would want to generate a setter for this. So now you would see that the setter injection would be used. So let's now run this program. I'll be searching for auto wiring by. So how is the auto wiring done? Auto wiring by type from B name to bean. So it's now using setter injection. Earlier when we did this using constructor injection, this was the line which was in the log. Auto wiring by type from B name via constructor. When we are using setter, it just prints auto wiring by type from B name binary search IMPL to B name this. Actually, you even don't need to create a setter. So let's actually remove this setter completely. So I'm just leaving at auto wired. I'm not even creating a setter in here. Let's run this. Okay, please do save. I'll search for auto wiring by and you can see that the text does not really change. So we saw that when we use constructor injection, this is what happens, constructor injection. And when we use setter injection, this is what would happen. And we saw that if we just left at auto with no get setter or constructor, this is what is the log that is being printed. So these are the three options for using auto wiring, constructor, setter, and no setter or constructor. One thing you would need to remember is the fact that these two are really the same. So whether you're creating a setter or not, the way Spring does the auto wiring is the same. So when people say setter injection, they would be either referring to any of these. You can even call this to be using setter injection. So if I just put auto wired here and remove the setter, this is kind of also termed to be setter injection, even though there is no setter in there. Basically, we have two options, right? Constructor injection and setter injection. So how do you choose between constructor and setter injection? Actually, the choice used to be really clear earlier. In the earlier versions of Spring, what we used to suggest to do is all mandatory dependencies should be auto-wired using constructor. For example, here, this is a mandatory dependency. Sort al without sort algorithm, the binary search cannot work at all. So this is a mandatory dependency. If there is a dependency which it can work without, so if some dependency is not available and still the class can run, those dependencies are optional dependencies. So if you have mandatory dependencies, then the recommendation was to use constructor injection. For all other dependencies, the recommendation was to use setter injection. So if it's optional dependency, go for setter injection. Otherwise, use constructor injection. That was the recommendation with earlier versions of Spring. But with at auto wired, what happens is even though you're using set, setter injection, if a bean of at auto wired is not found. So let's say you put at auto wired and you don't have any bean of sort algorithm present in the class path. Then what would happen? The context will not launch at all. So now actually there is not a lot of difference in terms of mandatory or optional dependencies. Typically in these days, most of the applications I have worked on use this kind of construction. So what this would do is I have no need to create a constructor. However, one drawback of this approach is that you can add a lot of dependencies. So because it's easy to now add a lot of dependencies, what people tend to do is add 5, 10, 15, 20 dependencies for a specific thing and it would become very complex to manage. The same thing if there was a constructor injection being used, I would need to keep adding stuff to the constructor and you'd see that the constructor has 15 arguments, which is really tough to maintain. So constructor injection kinds of makes those kind of op uh, like kind of problems very, very obvious. The setter injection kind of hides those dependencies because all that you need to do is very simple, right? Create another dependency and just put at auto wired on top of it. Other than that, right now, I mean, with the spring framework as it is, there is not a great deal of difference in using setter and constructor injection. The lines have really, really become thin between constructor and setter injections. Whichever option you pick, I don't think you'd be doing very bad. Until the next video, bye-bye.